What's up everybody, I'm Adam, you're watching Model Aviator, and this is the Carbon Z Cub SS we picked up a couple of weeks ago. We put out a poll on our community section of our YouTube channel and asked a bunch of you what you'd like to see us do with this thing. And there were quite a few suggestions, and we're going to actually try to check all those boxes eventually. We'll check them all today. Today, we're going to do a little bit of a review on this airplane, show you some different types of flying with it, but we have got some plans for the future with this airplane, not too distant future to be honest, uh, that I think a lot of you are going to find very, very interesting. And if you suggested something cool in that poll, chances are you're going to see what you suggested eventually fairly soon. So yeah, we picked this up secondhand from our buddy Paul. He's a member at one of the clubs that we fly at. He's had it since I think March of this year. So not very long, didn't put many flights on, he's just not a Cub guy, and I absolutely am, so we were very, very happy to take this thing off his hands and um, put our spin on it. You can see Heidi did a little painting up front, make it look a little bit more realistic, a little bit more proper for a carbon Cub, and yeah, so let's just get to reviewing this thing. So full disclosure, obviously, since we picked it up secondhand and already assembled, didn't pull it out of the box and did not do the assembly. So I can't speak to that on this particular airplane. However, I have built the Carbon Z150. It has some similarities to the way this thing goes together and there's nothing about anything on this airplane that I haven't done before with something. I can tell you that Rest assured, everything from Horizon Hobby and any really reputable company is packaged very, very well. The shipper is going to have to do something really stupid to damage your airplane parts on the way, and if they do, it'll be their fault, not the fault of the manufacturer, more than likely. When it comes to assembling this airplane, it is a bit more involved than most foamies, especially from Horizon Hobby. They make things so easy. This one is not so easy. You have to hinge the rotor, you have to hook up a lot of the ball links. You're going to have to assemble this gear which is a bit more complicated than your normal gear. You'll have to install the motor and the prop, plug it up to the ESC. There, There's a little bit more to do with this airplane. It is not overly complicated. It is not a hard build. It's not even a hard assembly. But if the only thing you've put together so far is an apprentice, it's going to be a lot more involved than that, but not too hard for an experienced modeler for sure. This is the version 2 of this airplane. The original one came out, I think, almost a decade ago, if not a decade ago. The original Carbon Z Cub was a pretty amazing airplane, to my knowledge, if I'm remembering correctly. That was the very first giant scale EPO airplane that was mass produced and offered to the masses, and it was amazing. It was an amazing airplane. It was pretty much groundbreaking at the time, and they flew amazing, but they had their issues. And with this version two, they took care of quite a few of those. I have to say that the new gear, that is the biggest, nicest improvement to me personally. Uh, some owners might not share that opinion, but the gear on the version 1, the blue and white one, was pretty doggone wonky, and this works. The tires are a little bit bigger, a little bit softer, and still very, very light. And that spring system works the way that true Cub gear should work. Soaks up everything, but has enough strength to go back to the position that it is supposed to go in. Uh, really a nice piece of kit. Great improvement there. They made lots of other improvements. The biggest thing is in the paint scheme and the squared off wing tips. By squaring off the wing tips and putting the little droop in there, they've added wing area, they've added aileron area, which adds capability, makes the airplane capable of flying a bit slower, which is always nice with a stole plane if that's what you want to do with it. They did little trick things like adding a bearing to the motor so that it can handle some of the gyroscopic stuff. 
that some people like to put this thing through. It's a very capable airplane and helping you with that gyroscopic stuff and the 3D realm. They actually hinged the flaps with bevels on both sides so the flaps will go up or down. So if you so choose, you can put a big enough receiver in here to separate the flaps, give each one its own channel and actually do a flap to aileron mix. So you have full span ailerons, which if you're going to do a lot of 3D, a lot of XA, you're going to need that. We didn't do that. That's not what we're going to do with the airplane, but it's capable of some 3D and XA. Without that, you'll see that. That's a pretty, pretty nice improvement. The other thing is the thumb screws. You used to have to use tools to get this airplane together. Field assembly does take a bit probably four or five minutes uh, compared to the minute that it takes to assemble the Carbon Z Cub, or I'm sorry, the Carbon Z 150. Uh, but compared to the original Carbon Z Cub, this thing probably shaves a minute off of the assembly time, which is pretty significant. Even though it takes four or five minutes to get this thing together, it's well worth it once you do. It's an amazing flying giant scale foamy. And we're going to get to that. There are some other little improvements, especially if you get the bind and fly that has saved. This one is not a bind and fly. Our buddy that we bought it from is a Futaba user, so the AS3X and Safe RXs really don't do him any good. He just had a regular Futaba receiver in there. He pulled that out. We put a regular Spectrum AR626 channel receiver in there because this airplane flies absolutely splendid. It does not need stabilization in my opinion. Not that you can't use it if you want to, but it doesn't need it to fly good. It's a great pure airframe. We'll talk more about that in the flying. Right now, we're going to show you our setup. But oh, before I go to the setup, I almost forgot about another really important part of this airplane. This battery tray system was inspired by Morgan Mill. Morgan Mill used to make some light ply kits battery tray kits for different airplanes that made getting batteries in and out much much easier. That's what this is inspired by. This little tray will hold anywhere from a 3000 to a 7000 6 cell pack and this makes getting the battery in this airplane especially to the rear much much easier and the farther back you put the larger batteries the better this airplane flies and the more capable that it is and with the version 2 you're able to do that so that's a pretty important part so now we will show you our setup at least for now that may change a little bit but you're going to see this airplane again guaranteed um, so if we change something in the setup by then we'll let you know but for now this setup is what we're flying it at and we're going to show you some pretty cool flying this uh a good little versatile bit of flying here so enjoy that and we'll see you back here on the bench and we'll give you our final thoughts. We have this throttle curve set to a switch for scale stole flying. We'll explain more in the flying. We're just showing you the key parts of our Maiden. That was our Maiden takeoff. This is our stall test. This one is clean with no flaps down. And it's interesting. Clean, it drops the right wing. Now we'll go into the dirty stall test with full landing flaps. And interestingly enough, it drops the left wing with the flaps down. And now we'll go into our maiden landing before we get to some sport flying.
We added a landing and takeoff from the Geo Textile just to show you how well this plane handles that. A lot of big tired bush planes don't do too well from a smooth surface. You have to be on the rudder with this thing, but it does well. Here I'm going to show you how well this gear works and absorbs problems. I'm going to stay in the slip all the way to touchdown. And even though I hit crooked, gear soaked it right up. Here we're going to sport fly the Carbon G Cub, everything from pretty mild to kind of wild. The Garvin G Cub is one of those airplanes that's just a good, honest airframe. You hear us talking about planes like that. It's got a wide flight envelope, it's rock solid everywhere, and it just inspires confidence. You feel like you can get away with whatever you want to do. Like most Cubs, the Carbon G responds very well to rudder. If you want coordinated turns, you're pretty much going to have to use it. The bigger they are, the more that becomes more prevalent.
the stock power system, you've got just enough to hover. I have to admit, I was very surprised at how well that thing did a flat spin. I didn't expect it to get that flat. And then I heard some Canadian geese going over and saw a nice V formation of them, so I thought I'd see if they'd let me fly some formation with them. They're going a little faster than I am, so I had to speed up. Now I got their speed matched. Don't think I've got enough battery to make it all the way to Florida though, so I guess I better get out of there. Here I thought I'd give a couple of pop tops a try. That was more like a pinwheel, but it looked cool. I'll give it one more try coming back the other way. Still not a pop top, but again, it looked cool. That takeoff and climb out was actually full throttle on my gimbal. That's the scale throttle curve that I was talking about right after the setup. That's there to basically give me full scale Carbon Cub SS power, not crazy rabid model power. idea behind this series of maneuvers is to just check and make sure that I agree with the performance, the climb rate, all the things about how the power works with this plane to ensure that I'm mimicking an actual carbon cut.
the advantage of this for me is making stole takeoffs require actual technique. This kind of throttle curve will also ensure that you have to utilize that downline to gain a bit of speed and momentum before any aerobatics, just like a full-scale plane. This works great on airplanes like this. It's not something that works good for warbirds in every kind of scale plane, but for a bush plane, it works really well. you'll hear an audible change in the throttle. That's me flipping the switch off. finish the flying footage up with some bush flying from one of our favorite dirt roads. You've seen this place before. Worthy of note, everything you're going to see here is utilizing the scale throttle curve. Large airplanes like this handle landing on a dirt road so much better. This looks so realistic. It doesn't get bounced around and moved anywhere near as much as a park flyer. It just looks like an actual carbon cup.
If it looked like I was having fun, I was. Man, what an airplane. So, let's wrap this thing up. The assembly is not for beginners. It's not a beginner's airplane. Uh, this is something more suited as maybe a second or third airplane. It takes a little bit of modeling skill to properly assemble this airplane and know you're doing it right. A little bit of experience to set it up properly, especially considering the different types of setups that you have available to you. It'd make a great maybe second or third airplane. If you've mastered a trainer, this would be a great tail wheel trainer. It'd be a great first aircraft with flap trainer, a great first stall plane. It's very forgiving, yet incredibly capable. So you can learn a lot about aerobatics, even some stuff about 3D and XA, depending on what you do. And oh, by the way, they make a power upgrade for this thing. So if you want to do 3D, that actually gives you enough power to punch out. You saw we were able to get it to hover, but I'm at or very, very near full throttle. There's not a lot of margin there. It just barely has enough. With the power upgrade, you have more than enough, and I would strongly suggest that if that's what you want to do with it. We love the way this thing flies. We get a lot of requests to do comparisons of the various foam stole sport planes that we've flown and we're going to get to that that'll be one of the things that we're going to do that will involve this and spoiler alert this one is going to be at the top of the heap for me now it's not perfect for every mission because of the big size bigger flies better uh, that is a, a saying that you're going to hear in modeling and it's absolutely true but bigger comes at a price they're more expensive they're harder to store, they're harder to transport. You have to be able to do all that or it's not viable for you. So this may not be the best option for everybody, but for me, it is my favorite stole foam plane that I've ever flown. And that's really saying something because I've flown quite a few. I love this thing. Uh, the downsides are they didn't put lights, which I think since they did a completely new mold for the wings to go from the rounded tips of the version 1 to the square droop tips of the version 2, I can't believe that landing lights and navigation lights were not part of that deal. They should have been. They put lights on everything at Horizon Hobby, and at the time that they did this version 2, the Carbon Z150 was already out, and it has one of the nicest lighting kits of any foam plane out there. So uh, it's just kind of weird to me that their flagship foam giant scale airplane doesn't have lights. I feel like it should. So for me, that's a definite downside. The assembly at the field is a little bit of a downside, especially if you are used to park flyers. If you're used to putting your airplane down, putting a battery in it, and off you go. Not that simple with this. It's going to take you about five minutes to put it together, about four minutes to disassemble it. That's just the nature of the beast with the giant scale airplane. It doesn't bother me. But for somebody not used to that, that's going to take some getting used to. Uh, it's not something that you just run right out when you've got 10 minutes to fly and throw this thing in the air if you can't transport it together. And unless you've got a big trailer, you can't transport this thing together. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know what else to say about it. We love it. We highly recommend it. It's not perfect for everybody, but it's going to be perfect for a lot of you. We'll put a link in the description 
where you can go to the page at Horizon Hobby and get yourself one of these if you'd like. Please like, comment, and subscribe. That really helps us out. We appreciate each and every one of you, all of our loyal longtime subscribers and all of the new people that are coming in. We're getting a lot of subscribers every month. We appreciate all the support. Thank you, each and every one of you. Happy flying, and hopefully we'll see you here next week.